Good morning, YouTubers. Today we're at Colleen Halifax. And again, I'm joined with Andrew. Well, what we have is a gentleman here who, I suppose it's a bit of a loose connection with Bradford, but it's an important connection with Bradford. Yeah. Um, we're looking for uh, a major, okay, in the Dragoon Guards. Yeah. Uh, who was actually at the... Um, Charge of the Light Brigade. Now, I don't know if you, most people will have seen Gentleman Jack over the past couple of years on TV, and that was filmed at Shibden Hall in Halifax. Right. Well, there's another Shibden Hall, and it's called Upper Shibden Hall, which is up at a place called Catherine oh, Slack, I see. which is Queensbury. Right. It didn't used to be Queensbury, so it didn't come under Bradford, but it does now. Right. It has a BD postcode. So, so we'd investigate this chap because he's got quite a, a tale to tell and just surprised it's not been spotted yeah. sooner really and we're talking a bit in a low tone because of the communion going across there yeah it won't make uh, much of a racket no we'll be careful because i we? know you're quite noisy respectful <laughs> what's interesting is here it is all right <laughs> next to the gate more or less exactly so this is the grave of michael stocks of Upper Shibden Hall, and he was major in Her Majesty's Regiment of the Royal Dragoons. Right, okay. So, yeah, Major Stocks, uh, quite a character, but I'll just show you. If anybody knows Queensbury, Catherine Slack is on the top road coming out of Queensbury, going down to uh, Halifax, and most people up there would have seen the derelict sort of um, gatehouse on the route up there. And that is the entrance down to Upper Shibden Hall. So again, back then it would have been Halifax. Now it's been pulled into the sort of the Bradford wing. Right. Um, I believe some of it is derelict. I think the stables are still occupied by people, but the, uh, the actual hall itself fell into disrepair. Right. Um, so, what I've done is, a few years ago, I was looking at a book by James Parker, from Great Horton, and he did the illustrated history from Hipperholm to Tongue in 1904, which is like a guidebook. Somebody a bit like us, going around different places on the outskirts of Bradford, though, and just looking for unusual stories. And he quotes this chap in that book, like a passing conversation. So I wanted to prove if this was actually real or not, because that's the key. Um, was this guy actually there, uh, sort of in the Crimea? Obviously, with what's going on now with the the Russian war and everything. Yeah. This chap was there at that time, um, sort of um, Sebastopol, Balaclava, all the famous battles down there. Big cross on the top there. So having a bit more of a look, uh, death of a Crimean veteran. So a hero, it says there, Crimean hero has passed away in Scotland of Major Michael Stocks of Woodall, Norfolk and Upper Shibden Hall in Yorkshire. Uh, born in 1825, entered the Royal Dragoon Guards in 1847 and he served with the regiment throughout the Crimean War and was present at the Battle of Inkerman and Balaclava. He gained a Crimean medal with three clasps, the Turkish medals, the fourth class of the Order of Measure D. Uh, he retired in 1861 and two years later married the youngest daughter of the late Colonel uh, Macri, oh I can't say it's a Scottish name, uh, of Oakfield Argyle. Um, so he had a house in Norfolk he had Upper Shibden Hall, um, but then I found some definitive sort of evidence. Took part in the heavy cavalry charge against the Russians, uh, the charge of the Light Brigade. Yeah. Now, from what I can tell, he was witness to it, but he was part of the group that helped them retreat. So he was one of the last, last men in charge. I see. Uh, and there's so much out there about him. Um, again, just highlighting. If 
So senior captain was wounded severely. Um, so after the actual charge, it therefore fell to Captain Stocks to bring the regiment out of the battle. So he w didn't just witness it, he went down that valley to get people back yeah. out. So what, you, what you're seeing is actually somebody particularly famous at the time, I suppose, but a bit obscure now. Yeah. Uh, to think that it was there in the Crimea uh, at a time when we're actually contesting things now is quite fascinating. Now, I said it was a bit woolly, the connection to Bradford, which it is, I suppose, but if you look, the Bradford Weekly Telegraph actually does an article on the Stocks family. Right. So there, there was interest back then, the whole family and what they obviously contributed. And I actually have a, an artist's impression of him. Oh, right. That's a chap there. The late Major Stocks, a balaclava hero. And if anybody wonders, yes, that's where the name balaclava comes from, the item of clothing. It was designed on the battlefield because ah. of the weather. Another fun fact there, by yeah. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he, when he died, we got the probate. Uh, he, he left, was it three hundred thirty-six thousand four hundred fifty-three yeah. pounds in eighteen ninety-five? Yeah, eighteen ninety-five. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah. Now the the other interesting thing about this was I tried to sort of get people interested, uh, sort of the Halifax Courier and that, and they were a bit sceptical because they said that the bit of information I'd found was a little bit, uh, not enough, basically. So, just by chance, uh, 2022, I found that when they were at his Norfolk home, they found his war diaries, okay. his medals, uh, and they all sold at auction for uh, just over eight and a half thousand pounds. And his handwritten diaries actually speak of the charge right. and everything. So it kind of ticks the boxes. We would definitely know that this man was there. Yeah. Uh, there's enough evidence. Um, and when you look online, there are some snippets from them telling you uh, how um, how the, the events took place. Um, yeah, there's quite a bit of information. Some of it's a bit graphic as well, obviously, because yeah. it was a, a bloody battle charging through the valley whilst the uh, Russian guns were firing at them. Can they read about him on the net? Is there enough information? Yeah, on the net? yeah. yeah, you'll yeah. find it. Um, and then this is just a picture of... Nice. If we do that, there we go. That's a portrait there of... Major Stokes. All right. That's his war diary, and that's his medals. So that's probably the closest image you probably can get of him. Yeah. And there, there's yeah. a medal there, which I'm just pointing to there. Yeah. And apparently that was taken from um, um, a dead Russian right. off the battlefield. I see, I see. So, yeah, all this ties up quite nicely with this story. Now... When he came back, eventually he retired, and this is this other Bradford link, because uh, as major, he was then stationed at Bradford Moor Barracks. Ah. Now, Bradford Moor Barracks is at the top of Barker End yeah. Road. Yeah. It was up there near the, what was called the ba uh, Barrack Tavern and things like that. So the housing estate up there used to be the, the main Bradford Barracks. So he was actually working in Bradford. So that's a connection. Yeah, yeah. In case somebody out there mentions it, that's a yeah, connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I say, it's a bit woolly in yeah. the sense that Catherine Slack is now part of Bradford, uh, used to be Halifax, but this chap also uh, worked at the Bradford Moor Barracks in Bradford. All right, let's have one more look. Certainly. The sun's out. Yeah, it's come out on the righteous. <laughs> And you can see my shadow, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll just pan across there. It's a nice little place, actually. It is. It's a quaint uh, little graveyard. I do believe there are some more memorials to uh, the Stocks family in the church itself. Right, just across the but, road. Um, 
as you can see, it's a busy day today over yeah. there. So, so there you have it. You have a uh, a war hero from the Charge of the Light Brigade. Thanks for watching, and on to the next blog.